Well, good morning and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Shelter Daily and His Word. It's so glad that you are here today. Thank you so much for joining with us. Uh, looking forward to just diving into the Word of God this morning. We're going to be uh, looking at Psalms chapter 15 this morning. So if you have a Bible, you want to go ahead and get that out and open it up. Psalms chapter 15, we're going to be looking there. And, and let's just uh, give the Lord praise and thanks for what He's done and doing in our lives. Father, thank you for the opportunity today to share together. Thank you for uh, being with us and, and God just allowing us the opportunity to be in the Word today. I pray your blessing upon uh, the Word that we share. I pray that you will just touch us and, and allow it to speak to us. And, and God, just uh, build our hearts. Encourage us so that we can encourage others. God, as we talked this week, we talked about the blessed life. So God, we want to be that blessed person to bless others. That's why you've done what you've done in our lives. So God, today we pray, just be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, open to Psalms chapter 15, and we're going to read together. And it, this is what it says. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly he, and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fears the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not charge, or does not change, he who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Now, what's interesting about this psalm, this, again, this is another one of those characteristic studies that we look at. And, but not only that, I think that uh, it really, the way it opens up is really important for us. And, 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 and so let, let, let's look at this. This is a, a, a wonderful psalm. But what it does, it, it presents what I think is, is, is really a, a true citizen of heaven. All right? A true citizen of heaven. One who travels from this life in, that is on this journey and heaven is their destination. This is that person. This psalm uh, has uh, a lot of ethical things in it. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that it's very practical. Uh, and, 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 it, and it's that way because I believe that uh, the psalmist is wanting us to understand how to live the life we live in a very practical way. We, we, we could call this uh, practical Christianity, if you will, we could, that, because that's what this is. Uh, if, if you have a Bible, it probably gives a kind of a title. Mine uh, says it's the characteristic of, of the godly. Um, but really is, it really is a, uh, uh, just a, a, a psalm that helps us to understand, you know, how do we get from this life to the life to come? And it's significant because there's, there's like two questions that are asked here. And, and he talks about uh, the, the idea of one, he says, Lord, who will abide in your tabernacle? And then the second part of it is, who will dwell in your holy hills? And, and this is significant of, of how he does this. He talks about these two different things. It is perhaps a reference uh, to the, 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 what we would term the militant church, if you will. Uh, the idea of, uh, which is typified by the sanctuary of the tabernacle. And then uh, and, and a church that is triumphant in heaven. Uh, before we, we go to heaven, we have to be a member of the church here. Uh, in other words, we have to be a part of the body here. Uh, you know, some people say, well, I don't have to be a part of a church and I'm not talking about specifically like, uh, do you go to a Baptist church or Methodist church, Presbyterian or Pentecostal church? But what he's really saying is, is that, Lord, who are those who belong to the true church down here? Who are those who are really a part of the body of Christ? Who are those who are a part of the true church 
and who are traveling on to the city of heaven. They're going to the heavenly city. They're the ones. So he, he, he first asks the Lord, who are they? And the remainder of the verse that are in the psalm is the Lord's description of who they are, these pilgrims, if you will, who are journeying here in this earth, sojourners living in this life, and but their intent and their goal is to make heaven as their final destination. And this is what, what he's talking about. So, so uh, let us test ourselves right here, all right? And let's see, uh, by God's idea of the Christian life, if we are those kinds of people, all right? Now, this might be a little difficult for some of us to really look at this, and we might want to fluff this up, but I don't think we should. I think we really need to take a real, you know, sincere look at what it is that the psalmist is saying here about how we journey through this life and the character of our lives from here as we move into heaven. So he says, the heavenly citizen, all right, the one who wants heaven to be their home, has to be one whose life is blameless. Notice what he says in verse 2. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. So the thought contained here is that uh, the idea of one who is blameless. All right. Now, blameless, to be blameless is not uh, that of perfection, if you will, but it's more about one who is without blame. Okay. So, you know, some people think, well, I've got to be perfect in order for me to get to heaven. That's not, you know, perfection, uh, true perfection comes through Christ. It doesn't come through anything we do. It's what Christ has done in us. So, but what, he, what he's really pointing to is this idea of, of living a life without blame. If you look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14 and 15, it says, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So the Apostle Paul kind of breaks this down and he says now, he said the idea here is that as a believer in Christ, you are, uh, you are to do everything you do without complaining and disputing. <clears throat> now, <laughs> when, I, when I think about that, I think about uh, how many times do we, you know, kind of like, oh man, I don't want to do that. I don't, you know, why should I have to do this? You know, why am I the one that's chosen? Why can't somebody else do it? Uh, or even getting to, into a dispute. Uh, you do it. I don't want to do it. You do it. No, I, I don't want to do it. You do it. Uh, this idea of disputing. But he says, no, we're not to be that way. When we're, when we're called upon to do something, we should rise to the occasion. We should be quick to say, yeah, okay, whatever you want me to do. However you want me to do it, I'll do it. Uh, and do it without complaint. Don't say, yeah, I'll do it, and then get in there and say, man, I can't believe there's, everything's so messed up. I can't believe, you know, they put me in charge of this, and look at the mess i got to deal with. No, no. We are, to, we are to do this without complaining, without dispute, that we become, because by doing that, we become blameless or harmless. In other words, we won't harm. You know, sometimes I don't think we realize that in our complaining about the way God's doing something or the way others have done something, and we're going in there to try to fix it up or whatever, we don't realize that what we're doing is we're putting blame. We're harming. We're to be blameless. We're to be harmless, all right? We're to be children of God without fault in the midst of this crooked world. That's the way the world does it. You know, if you're, at, if you're called upon to uh, fix something that got broken, the last thing, you know, and I, and I find myself at times guilty of this, and, 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 and this is not the way we're supposed to be. You know, we're not supposed to blame other people for doing something. What we really should be doing is saying, you know what, let's just get the job done. Don't worry about who did what, when, where, and how. Let's just do what we have to do to get it right. Let's just make it right. That way, by making it right, it's far better than it would be if we try to, you know, pass the buck, put it on someone else, well, it wouldn't have been for so-and-so. I wouldn't have to do this. Now, you know, sometimes living a sinless life seems to be difficult. 
And, and, and it is, and this is, and, and it can be at times, especially if, you know, if we're, we're quick to blame others. But be blameless and harmless and without rebuke, you know, without blemish. Be complete, be full, be perfect, sincerely, uh, have sincerity. Uh, you know, uh, don't look for a way to put it on someone else. You know, uh, it, it would be like uh, reading a letter that a blind person wrote, all right, with their own hand, and they write, and when they write, you know, maybe they didn't write in perfect lines, it might have been all over, but what they said was perfect. What they said was without blame, all right? Now you can sit there and say, who in the world wrote this letter because of the way it looked? You know, oh, it looks like a first grader must have wrote this. Well, no, that's, who cares how they wrote it? It's the content. What is it, right? It's kind of like living in the world, it's like Martin Luther King said, you know, uh, he, he, he believed that a day would come when people would no longer judge people by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. This is the life that Christ wants us to live. You know, we should be willing to step up. So he says, you know, what kind of person is that that, that, is, that is walking, that is really a true citizen of heaven? Uh, it is one whose character is blameless. Our character is, you know, what we are in the sight of God, what we are in our own hearts, right? Now look at this. We are to be blameless both in what we do, our walk, and in what we say, our speech. So we're to walk blameless, we're to speak blameless. The secret of this is found in Second uh, of of. Philippians 2, verses 15, 14 and 15, are really found in Philippians 2, verse 13. So if you look at verse you know, 15, it says that we are to become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom we are to shine as lights in the world. Well, if you go back to verse 13, he says, for it is God who works in you both to will and and to do His good pleasure. So the objective here is, is we're to allow God through the Holy Spirit to work in us so that we can walk and speak correctly without blame, without bringing harm to someone else. And then uh, notice the heavenly citizen is one who is uh, charitable towards his neighbor. Charitable towards his neighbor. Notice what verse 3 says. Uh, declares. It says that uh, in verse 3, it says, he that backbiteth with his tongue, uh, he, does, he doesn't do that, and nor does he uh, does evil, uh, does he do evil to his neighbor. He doesn't backbite with his tongue, and he doesn't do evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. Three things. He doesn't backbite with his tongue, doesn't do evil, evil to his neighbor, and he doesn't take up a reproach, all right? Now, if I look at Mark chapter 12, verse 30 and 31, it says this, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This, he said, is the first commandment, and the second is like like, like it. He said, it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Now, no, notice, notice what he's saying here. You are to what? Love God, how? With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. In other words, with your entire being, with your, with your spirit man, your soulish man, your emotions, and your, your mind, and so everything about you, right? Everything about you. Look at this. Then he said, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the way I love God with my entire being is the way that I love my neighbor. I love my neighbor the same way. As I do this myself, I do this to my neighbor as well. 
So a lot of times people say, well, it's, you know, how you love yourself is how you love your neighbor. Notice what he's saying. You are to love God this way with your entire being. And by your entire being, mind, soul, body, and strength, you're to love your neighbor the same way, right? A lot of, again, we a lot of times look at this and say, well, what he's really saying is, well, you know, you love yourself. You're supposed to love yourself. Therefore, because you love yourself, you love your neighbor. Notice what he's, notice how he puts this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself. So in that manner, okay? Now granted, you know, if you love, you know, if you, you, you don't want to do harm to yourself, you wouldn't want to do harm to your neighbor. You don't want to backbite your, you know, backbite, uh, you know, you want people talking about you, you don't talk about other people. You don't want to, people to do evil against you, so don't do evil against your neighbor. You don't want uh, people to uh, reproach you, then you don't want to bring a reproach against your neighbor. See, the, the, the test of our love for our neighbor has to do with our tongue and our ears and what we say about them and what we hear about them. What we say about them, what we hear about them. And God's ideal man or woman will be very slow to say uh, and very slow to hear anything harmful about someone else. So you're in a conversation with someone and they say, did you hear about so-and-so? Your answer is no, and I don't want to hear it now. It's that simple. No, I haven't. Not, no, I haven't. What did you hear? <laughs> we like to do that, don't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How many times have we done it? You know, but it should be, no, I haven't heard. And really, frankly, I'm not interested in hearing it now because I don't want to hear and I don't want to speak something against someone especially if they're not even in our company. I think they call that gossip, is what I think they call it, when someone's not in the presence of their name being mentioned and we talk about them without them knowing about it. Yeah, I think that's a good definition of gossip right there. So the ideal person is one who says, you know what, I'm very slow to, I, I, I'm not going to say anything you know, that would bring harm to them. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, one of the things we got to be careful, especially as believers, one of the things we have to be very careful of is not to say something in the, under the guise of or under the umbrella of, well, would you pray with me about this matter? Uh, I don't have to know details in order for me to pray with you about something. If you know something that I don't know, it's not necessary for me to know about it so that I can pray about it, all right? Don't, you know, don't come and say, would you pray with me about so-and-so? You know, I was talking to someone and they said this and they're going through this and they're dealing with this. No, don't go there. Stay away from that. Uh, that, is, that is harmful. That is not helpful. And especially even if you're using it as, as, a, as a way of, of wanting to pray, just say, you know what, would you, would you help me pray for so-and-so? Um, they just need our prayers. Leave it at that. Absolutely, man, I'm all, I'm all on that, man. We'll, we'll, we'll pray and we'll see God together. And, and later on, when, I'll ask you, hey, how's that going? Well, you know what, God's doing something. Okay, great, praise God. If, if that person wanted me to know about those things, I really think that person would come to me and tell me. I think they would, I don't think they need, need a, a mediator to tell me about the things that are going on with them, you know. And, and if, if nothing else, I could go to them and say, hey, how are you doing? Then I could find out for myself. Much better to find out from the person than it is to find out through two or three other people what's going on, okay. And so to, to, to know this, this is very important. If I'm going to love them, you, I got to think, how would I want someone to treat me and the thing that I'm talking about or the thing going on in my life? Would I want five or six people know about it and then it get to me and everybody, maybe even get it distorted? Or do I want to be the one to say, let me be the one to say it? I think I would much rather me be the one to say it than to have somebody else say it for me. That makes a whole lot more sense. And this is what 
This is what the psalmist is, is really trying to tell us. He's really trying to say this, look, I want you to know this. Uh, the test of our love for our neighbor has to do with our tongue, our ears. It's what we say about them, what we hear about them. That's what he's, that's what he's pointing to. And so when you look at it, he says, he doesn't backbite with his tongue, nor does he do evil to his neighbor, and he doesn't bring a reproach against his friend, right? Leviticus 19 and, and, and 16 uh, gives us this. A talebearer is likened to a peddler who goes from house to house selling his wares. A talebearer. A person who spreads things, a gossiper, if you will, goes around just like a peddler does, goes from house to house. Uh, how solemn, uh, you know, it is, think about it, to think that we would sell out our friend or a fellow believer for the sake of just peddling something. That's not, the, that's not the thing to do. You know, the world does enough of that. We as believers, we don't need, we don't need to be a partaker of that. You know, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11 says, For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are simply busybodies. So he's warning, you know, he, Paul's bringing up this admonition. Look, we're hearing about these busybodies. Uh, we got to deal with that. You can't let that go on. So gossipers, people that are always doing this, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not there for the building of the kingdom. What they're doing doesn't build up one another. It actually tears down. In First, in first Timothy, Paul addressed uh, in, in chapter 5, verse 13, he said this. He said, besides, uh, they learn to be idle, uh, wandering about from house to house, and not, not only idle, but also gossips, busybodies, saying things which they ought not to say. So here he is, again, he's saying, look, beware of these kind of, beware of these people, beware of this. This is not, this is not a person that is really interested in, in, in making heaven their home. This is a person that's more interested in tearing down the body, not building up the body. James says, if anyone thinks that you are religious and does not bridle his tongue, then he deceives his own heart and, 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 and he is, uh, uh, his, his religion is basically useless. In other words, uh, he can say he's a believer, but man, if he doesn't speak right, doesn't talk right, uh, if he's willing to talk about other people and he's willing to just blurt out stuff, he's deceiving himself. That person's not a citizen of heaven. A true citizen of heaven will be careful what they say and careful what they hear. The psalmist, uh, you know, uh, gives us a really good uh, prayer to pray uh, in order for us to keep ourselves from this. He says in Psalms 141, 141 verse 3, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep a watch over the door of my lips. Hmm. I wonder if we prayed that every day, how our day would go. Lord, guard my mouth. God, guard my mouth. Guard my lips. Set a door. Watch over this so that I don't find my if i find myself going there stay away all right close the door uh walk away from it don't let it become the focal point of my life well that's the, the this is this is pretty heavy when you get into it you know uh to truly be charitable to truly love to truly care i i've got to watch out uh, I, I i when i you know go back to that in, in mark where in chapter 12, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second's like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment's greater than this. There's, there's, no, there's, no greater, there's no greater way to show you love people than to love them the way you, you love God and the way you love yourself. This is, this is, our, this is a test. What are we saying? What are we listening to? What are we speaking out? What are we, what are we allowing to come into our, our ear gate? And what are we, when we open up our mouth gate, what are we saying? Are we, are we uh, content to just say, you know what? I don't need details. 
I don't need to know that information. If I was, you know, if I was supposed to need that information, they, that person would have told me that. So please, just keep it to yourself. It's okay. And sometimes, you know, we do, we, they're, they're, and, and granted, I know there are times when we do this innocently. I, I, I get it. I know that, but, but you understand, even though we might do it innocently, it's not innocent. In other words, it can bring, it, it can bring, so, you know, if it can bring damage, why would I want to say it? If it could hurt that person, if it could be harmful for them. Now, I know that there are times when we, you know, that, that, that you know, that we're, that we're uh, to share things. And, but there's a way to do that. You know, basically, if someone comes to you and says, you know, I, I need to talk to you about something, um, you know, you can, you can say, uh, the person that, I, that shared this with me, you know, they told me it was okay to share this with you, uh, you know, that it's okay for me to, to share this because they know that I'm sharing this about them, all right? Um, I've, had, I've had people come to me and say, you know, Pastor, so-and-so has said something about something and um, I can't share it with you uh, because they said it was, it was personal and it was private and they don't want me to share it. Uh, and I'm thinking, okay, um, why didn't you ask them if it would be okay to share it with me? You know, it, it's that simple. It's not that hard. Uh, we don't have to make it a big secret. Uh, if, but if they say, well, you know what, I'd rather it not be shared, then you shouldn't share it with me. Okay? But then there are times when you're listening to someone and they're saying, you know, especially, you know, I'll give you an example. If they're, if they're saying something like that, uh, you know what, uh, I'm, you know, I want you to pray with me because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of indecisive about whether or not I want to stay a part of this church or not. That's just one example. Uh, but I don't want you to say anything to anybody. You can say to them, wait a minute now. You know, I, I, honestly, I think that that's something the pastor needs to know about, and I'll be willing to go with you to sit down with pastor and talk to you about it, uh, you know, and things like that. But, uh, you know, uh, to, to just leave it like that and then come around the back door and say, oh, pastor, you know what, you need to, you know, I'm really concerned about so-and-so. Um, or there's, you know, you need, you know, I, I can't go, I'm not at liberty to say. That kind of stuff creates too many negatives. You need to be open. We, we should always be open-handed with our conversations. And a true citizen of heaven, you know, is really looking for ways to be charitable, willing to love their neighbor enough, right? Love them, care for them. Be careful what I say, be careful what I hear. And if I do hear or say something, I need to clarify or I need to get clarity. I need to open up, a, that, 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 that needs to be dealt with long before I share it with anybody else. And that should be, that should be the thing we should guard. Well, um, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we, as we move along here. Uh, when we come back together again tomorrow, we'll, we'll talk about uh, as a citizen of heaven, we are to be careful um, with our friendships, right? Be careful how we deal with our friendships. And, and, and we'll look at that. We'll, we'll go in a little more detail about that tomorrow. So well, anyways, let, let's pray together. Father, thank you today for your word. Help us, God. Help us to be slow to speak, quick to listen. Help us, Lord, not to be a talebearer, not to be one who, who spreads gossip, not to be one that does it, but to, be, to guard. And Lord, help us as we love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength to love our neighbor the same way. That God, that we ought to be about looking for ways to build up and love on each other, to help each other, strengthen each other. So God, I pray today, just, be, just help us. And Lord, if somewhere along the way we've violated those confidences or we've uh, not made uh, things right or we've done something like that, God, help us, Lord, uh, to, to look for ways to, to seek out the forgiveness of the one that maybe we've violated. Maybe that's the reason why, Lord, you, you had me talk about conflict earlier uh, as we've uh, started this new uh, journey in Sheltered. So God, I pray, just, just lead us to those things. Show us those things. Let's put this together, God, so that we can be the very best we can be to glorify your name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, I want to thank you for uh, this opportunity to bring Shelter Daily to you. I hope you're enjoying these. Uh, if you are, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. I say that all the time, 
And very few people, you know, at times, you know, it's like sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I can't tell you enough of how important it is for you to check in with us and let us know. If you're listening to us on our podcast, uh, you know what? Drop us a line. Let us know what you think at jubileeworshipcenter.com. We love to hear from you. We love to have opportunities to share uh, with others. So uh, uh, we look forward to that. Uh, God bless you. Have a great day. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow for another episode of Shelter Daily in His Word.